All right, thanks for watching. And today I will discuss a very elegant criterion for a sequence to converge, which I like to call the limb soup squeeze theorem. And here's what it says. Suppose that the limb soup and the limb inf of a sequence coincide. So suppose limb soup of Sn equals limb inf of Sn and it equals to S. Then it turns out this forces the whole sequence to converge. So if the limb soup equals to the limb inf equals S, then the limit of the sequence is also S. And in some sense this makes sense because what is the limb soup? It's the worst possible limit, or the biggest possible limit. But the limb inf is the smallest possible limit. And what it's saying is, if those two are equal, then the sequence is forced to converge to S. And that makes sense because the limb soup, again, is the biggest value of S in the long run. The limb inf is the smallest value of S in the long run. So if they're the same, then Sn has to converge to S. All right, and now let's prove this, but I would like to mention that this is also true with S is infinity or minus infinity, but with different proofs. So today I'll just focus on the finite case. So proof, step one, again, let epsilon be given. particular what we know is that Sn, the limb soup of Sn, converges to S. So since the limb soup as n goes to infinity of Sn equals S, we know, again just by definition of the limb soup, that the limit as the threshold goes to infinity of the largest value of Sn after that threshold equals S. Now, what does it mean for this limit to be S? It means that eventually those two terms get very close to each other. So therefore, there is, is N1 such that If your threshold is bigger than n1, then the difference between the soups, I'm sorry, the difference between the soup and the limit is small. Minus s is less than epsilon. But then what this implies, it also implies the stuff without the absolute value. So the weaker condition that the supremum of Sn, where n is bigger than capital N, minus s is less than epsilon, and therefore, solving for the soup, we get that the supremum of Sn, Sn, where n is bigger than that threshold, is less than f plus epsilon. But look, the supremum is like a maximum. So in particular, this implies that for all n bigger than capital N, Sn is less than S plus epsilon. So for all n bigger than capital N, we know that, uh, and again, bigger than N1 if you want, we know that Sn is less than s plus epsilon, and therefore Sn minus s is less than epsilon. But you see, this is the first uh, condition we need for Sn to go to s. Now, all we need is now the, all we need is love and the other uh, identity. So we want this to be greater than minus epsilon now. But for this, we need to use the definition of blim n. Now, since lim inf n goes to infinity of 
Sn, sorry, lim inf of Sn is S, we know that uh, the limit as n goes to infinity of the infimal of Sn, where n is bigger than uh, a capital N, is S. So there is a N2. Is N2 such that if N is bigger than N2, then the difference between the infimal of Sn, where N is bigger than cap capital M and S is less than epsilon, but in particular this implies that this thing minus S is bigger than minus epsilon. Because again, if x is less than or equal to c, then x is between c and minus c. In particular, x is bigger than minus c, so here bigger than minus epsilon, and therefore, again, the infimum of Sn, where n is bigger than capital N, is bigger than S minus epsilon. So for all n bigger than capital N, so since the infimum is bigger than S minus epsilon, it means that for all n bigger than capital N, Sn is bigger than S minus epsilon. So this implies that Sn minus S is bigger than minus epsilon which is the second identity, and therefore, if we choose n large enough such that it's bigger than n1 and bigger than n2, then both conditions are true, and then we can conclude. So step three. Therefore, If you let capital N to be the maximum of uh, N1 and N2, then if N is bigger than capital N, then N is bigger than N1. So we have the first condition is true, so Sn minus F is less than epsilon by step one. And N is bigger than N2, so Sn minus S is bigger than minus epsilon by step two. So if we conclude that Sn minus S is bigger than minus epsilon and less than epsilon, and this implies that Sn minus S is less than epsilon, which is exactly what we needed. If epsilon was given, there is some threshold such that, so there is capital M such that after that threshold, we have our limit. So limit N goes to infinity of Sn equals S. And this concludes the proof. And what I wanted to say is, we have shown that if it converges, the limb soup equals to the limb inf in a previous video. And now we've shown that if the limb soup equals to the limb inf, then it converges. And more precisely, what this is saying is, if the limb soup is not equal to the limb inf, then the sequence doesn't converge. And this difference between limb soup and limb inf, it's sometimes called the oscillation. Inf. So in other words, if a sequence has positive oscillation, then it doesn't converge. And this is sometimes used a lot in analysis, the notion of an oscillation. All right, thank you very much.